What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting Leaning on, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Well, God bless you, Missionary Leah. God bless you, Sister Stimson. Praise the Lord. Elder and Sister Bailey. God bless you, Sister Petaway. God bless you, Kathy. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Riley. God bless you, Tiana. Good morning, Missionary Hamilton. God bless you, Geneva. Praise the Lord, Sister Hopkins. God bless you, Dr. Haywood. Praise the Lord, Sister Angela. God bless you, Janice. God bless you, Thomasina. Good morning, Mama Nett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister McAfee. God bless you, Elder Adams. Good morning, Lydia. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you, Sister Sessions. Praise the Lord, Deborah. God bless you, Iris. Good morning, Valencia. God bless you, Deacon and Sister Morris. Praise the Lord, Sister Sarah. Good morning, Twala. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Crooms. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Andrea. God bless you. Good morning, Burnett. Good morning, Carly. God bless you, Pastor Hargrove. Praise the Lord for you and Lady Hargrove. God bless you, Vanessa. God bless you, Sister. Uh, I'm sorry, Deacon Briggs. God bless you, Sister Miriam. God bless you, Margie. Good morning. Good morning, Mamie. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Frederick. God bless you, Sister Golden. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. God bless you, Marlette. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you, Sister Davis and Deacon Davis. God bless you, Tammy and Jesse. Good morning, Lydia. Good morning, Sister Felix. God bless you, Sister Wiggins. Praise the Lord to each of you. Good morning, Jerron. God bless you. God bless you, Mother Street. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to receive positive praise reports of people whose lives are being impacted through prayer. Someone who was a faithful follower of morning prayer, testified of a bill being wiped out, bill being wiped out, went to pay the bill, got called the person. They said, no, the balance is paid in full. The bill is gone. God does cancel debt, saints. God does indeed cancel debt. And that is another example of unexpected favor. God just moving in the lives of people, giving you what you need. Hallelujah. Everybody could use a blessing sometimes. And thank God for the blessing of the Lord falling upon the people of God. And thank God for the sustaining ability of prayer. Prayer just holding life together. Prayer just keeping us centered in the will of God, the plan of God, the work of God for our lives so that God is indeed glorified through us. So we're thankful today for each of you who have joined us in prayer, those who are on the conference call, those who are on Instagram and Facebook, and we will join YouTube. Praise God, and we thank God for each of you that are with us today. If you're on the conference call and you have a prayer request, you can text 
336-567-5358 and text your prayer request. If you're on Facebook, you can place your request in the chat or you can um, go to our inbox, either Refuge Temple or Reginald Davis and share your prayer request and we'll receive that. If you are on um, Instagram, you can certainly type your request in the comments section. We'll add that to the prayer list or you can um, direct message me at RJ Davis SR, RJ Davis SR. And once again, we'll add those names to the prayer list, to the prayer book. And as we continue to call out those who have needs, we trust in God for his ability to touch and deliver and to make whole. Let's go to the word in the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number one. These are the closing verses of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I want to read verses 15 through um, 18, 15 through 18. The Bible says, This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiris, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Thou knowest very well. I want us to focus for a few moments on the subject, people need people. People need people. You know, I, I, I realize that there are a lot of idioms in church world, things that we say things that we expostulate and put out to others, um, sometimes as a result of spiritual insight and sometimes the result of simply where we are in the moment. You know, one of the things that, that I, I'm, I'm trying as a person to grow into and to accept and realize is that... Um, Everybody's different. Everybody's different in how they approach you, how they treat you, how they embrace you, how they refuse to embrace you. And and people are also a product of their experiences. Um, whether whether no matter how open minded a person is, they still deal with you and deal with others based on their experiences. And something that we have to always work towards as believers and as just people in life is to not to overgeneralize people because of the actions of some people. First of all, because you don't know every person in the world. You know your family, your friends, your church members, um, the people that you have encountered in your journeys and your travels and your experiences. And but they don't represent everybody. They just represent the people that you have dealt with, the people that you have encountered, the people that you have had experiences with. And so you have to be very careful, even if those experiences are negative, not to overgeneralize a situation. Because what you find, even in the text that we've read, is that people behave, different people behave differently. All right. Different people behave differently. Even in the context of the church, different people behave differently. Sometimes that's a, a result of their experiences. Sometimes it's the result of the flesh. Sometimes it's the result of of the um, of, of the enemy using people, and I'm going to say this is true, that some people allow themselves to be used by the enemy to create problems for others. 
Um, it, it, it's not always, praise our God, just them being who themselves. Some of it is a demonic attack. Some of it is a, a, a spirit that will push you to doing or to not doing. And, and that becomes a means of um, discouragement or struggles or some type of difficulty because the enemy is using you to get somebody else. And, and you got to be careful. You got that's why you have to examine yourself. You have to um, look at your life and look at the word and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you because anybody can be deceived. Let me just say that again. Anybody can be deceived. Anybody can be um, motivated with the wrong motivation, or the wrong mindset. And you end up doing damage when you should be doing good. You end up doing harm when you should be a help to one another. And so it, it, it's important that, but we need to recognize this. And, and this is why I'm talking about generalization. You don't need to allow what others have done to taint you away from the mindset of everybody. All right. Maybe you dealt with a corrupt preacher. I'm not going to deny that there are corrupt preachers out there. There are preachers that, 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 are corrupt and they're deceptive and they're manipulative and they're all of those things, but that's not all of us. That's just the one that you encountered. Maybe you encountered more than one and that happens too because sometimes when you get your head together and say, you know what? He's just one. The enemy will make sure there's another one in the path so that once again, you start forming a generalization based on the fact that you've been failed by a preacher or you've been failed by a saint or you've been failed by an older saying, or you've been failed by a young person, and then you start to form generalizations, but it doesn't reduce the reality that God is going to bless us through people. Let me say that again. God is going to bless us through people. That means God's going to use people, whoever they are, to help, to love, to care, to support, and to, and, and to bless your life, even if other people have failed you. Even if other people have neglected you, even if other people have, for whatever reason, turned their back on you. And you know what? The Bible prepares us for both. The Bible prepares us for both. The Bible says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The biblical response is to rejoice. Let me say it again. When people turn against you, when people attack, when people do whatever it is that they do in, in, in an effort to harm you, the Bible says you need to rejoice. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. It's hard, it's difficult, it's challenging, but the reward is in heaven. The reward, there is a God that sees everything. There is a God that is aware of everything, and you don't go through anything with a person that God does does not see, that God does not respond to, and that God will not eventually deal with. Now, don't go around expecting lightning bolts to fall from heaven against everybody that doesn't like you. Don't expect God to give everybody who doesn't like you COVID. Don't expect God to give everybody who doesn't like you a disease or get them in a car accident, because the same way God is merciful with you, he is merciful with others. And we're praying that God would deal with someone's mind to realize the error of their ways and to correct their behavior and change. Because guess what? All of us are works in progress. All of us are striving, hopefully, to be better. All of us are trying to please God. And we need to have mercy, long suffering. And even Jesus said, pray for your enemies. He said that. He I didn't make it up. He said, pray for your enemies. Hallelujah. Pray for them. Pray for them. Bless those that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Love your enemies. And the Bible says, and be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. God grants mercy every day. God grants mercy every moment. And everybody that's watching and listening this morning, you have been a recipient of the mercy of God. Because if we would be honest, you haven't always done everything right. You're not doing everything right right now because you're flawed and you're human and you're striving to get better. Sometimes you act out of your emotions. Sometimes I 
act out of my feelings. And we have to be very careful that we don't allow ourselves to generalize when in reality we are all striving to be better. Because guess what? God is going to use people to bless your life. God's going to use people to cause you to grow in Christ. God's going to use people to cause you to elevate your mind and your spirit because God is using people. And, and so we see here in this text, Paul describing his situation. I told, I've told you this from the last couple of days that by this time, Paul was not in a private house. Paul was not being treated um, kindly. By this time, Paul was in prison. Paul was in prison. He was in real prison. It wasn't fake prison. It was real prison. With the, He was in a damp dungeon. He was chained. He was kept in solitary. He was isolated from people. He was, praise our God, ridiculed, perhaps even beaten while he was in prison. He is dealing with the roughness of prison. And yet here is the Lord. Here is the Lord using people to minister to Paul. Because when he was in a better place, people would come and they would sit and they would help help and they would bring things for him and they would look after him. But you know, I'm going to give you a reality of your life. Sometimes as your life tends to worsen, people begin to move away from you. That 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 is a reality. And that's why we have to really think and pray to make sure we're doing the right things when people are in hardship, when people are facing challenges. Now, it's, it's funny that when the challenge first erupts, everybody rushes in, everybody comes to help, everybody's calling and texting and writing. We see the same thing when people die. Everybody is coming. And then as the days move on, people go back to their, their, their lives. They go back to their stuff and they sometimes forget about people who are still in need. You know, if you lost somebody. All right. And everybody comes in for the funeral. Everybody comes in for the home going. Everybody's bringing food. Everybody's talking and hugging and loving. And then you have the funeral and you have the burial and people go back to their lives. You still lost that loved one. Let me say it again. You still are dealing and people are still dealing with the loss of those loved ones. And so when God puts them on your mind, you need to act swiftly because at that moment, they need you. At that moment, they need to hear from somebody. At that moment, they need someone to encounter them. But sometimes when conditions worsen, people tend to drop off. It's funny that when you, you can be sick and when, 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 when the sickness first comes and you're rushed the ER. Everybody's texting and calling. Are you okay? What can I do? But if you linger in your recovery, people tend to go back to what they're doing. And we have to become mindful of the fact that there are people out there that need us. Let me say it again. There are people in your reality that need you. They need your phone call. They need that text message. They need you to drop by if it's feasible. They need you to step and to be there and to make yourself available because one of the worst things about going through, let me say this, one of the worst things about going through is going through alone going through alone, going through alone. Yes, everybody goes through things, but God help us to not have to go through it alone. And maybe everybody won't rush to your aid as this, as it seems in this text, but guess what? God will deal with somebody's heart. Hallelujah. God will deal with somebody's mind to step in, to help, to support, because guess what? People need people. Now, Paul had this happen in verse 15, where he had um, Phygellus and Hermogenes, who just simply turned away. And, and, and we don't really get a reason why they turned away, except that they perhaps were ashamed of Paul's condition, didn't want to be connected with him, didn't want to be associated with him. And, and, and I'm going to say this, this is when you know who your real friends are. When people are talking about you, when people are saying stuff about you, when people are maligning your name and your character, the people that love you are the ones that stand up and say, I don't care what they're saying, you're still my friend. I don't care what you're saying, they're, what they're saying, you're still my brother, you're still my sister. And, and, and for whatever reason, these two people who had been a help, who had been an assistance, turned away from Paul. They turned away. All right. They turned away. They went back about their business. Perhaps they, 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 they were scared. They were afraid of the persecution that was on Paul, that it might fall on them. But for whatever reason, they turned away. But then there is Onesiphorus 
who does not turn away. He often, the Bible says, refreshed Paul. He often came to see about him and was not ashamed of my chain. And he said, the house of Onesimus. So it was just it was wasn't just him. It was it may have been his wife. It may have been his sons. It may have been the other people that lived or worked in the house. But all of them showed themselves that we're going to stand by you. And God help all of us. God help all of us to have the mindset, Lord, let me be a help to somebody. Somebody has a need. Somebody has a problem. Somebody just needs a friend. Somebody just needs a listening ear. And if you want to be used of God, if you want to say I'm God's vessel, it's not just when you're holding the microphone. And it's not just when you're standing up in front of the crowd. And it's not just when, praise our God, you're singing or preaching or teaching or carrying on a prayer meeting. But it's when you can lend yourself to the aid of somebody else. Lord, can help me to be used by you. Help me to be that person that will stand for the weak and stand for the oppressed and stand for the afflicted and stand for the one that's under trauma and in trials. Lord, help me to be that person that you can use, to be that person you can use to bless somebody else. And so he prays for God to grant Onesimus mercy because he has been with him. And he says, how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, that consistency, that being there. You know, you're never more like Jesus. And I got to close than when you show kindness to somebody that's in trouble. You are never more. Jesus said this and this, this and, and I need to close with this phrase. He said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to see me. And they said, when did we do this? We don't remember you being sick. We don't remember you being in prison. We don't remember you in any of these conditions. And Jesus said, when you do to the least of these, oh God, let me help somebody. The least of these. Some of us rush to the celebrities and ignore ordinary people. We rush to open doors and cater to and adjutant and minister and do all of this stuff to people that we think are of high position. But we ignore people who we think to be ordinary. Well, God says we ought to love everybody. And we ought to care for everybody. Yes, we care for leaders. And that's right. But we ought to care for everybody. And leaders ought to care for the people that are assigned to them. God bless us and strengthen us today. And remind yourself, people need people. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, today I just want to say thank you. Thank you for life and health and strength. And thank you. Father, for every single blessing you have bestowed upon us. You have showed us your mercy. You have shown us your grace. You have shown us your kindness and that we awaken this morning. And Lord, we arose, my God, to new mercy. We arose to your favor. We arose to your grace. And we arose with thanksgiving because you've been good to us, God. Hey, God, better to us, Lord, than we could have been to ourselves. Lord, you've been merciful to us. Lord, despite all of our imperfections, Lord, you continue to show favor to us. And God, we are so thankful, my God, to you. Thankful to you, God. Oh, God, for everything you have done. Thankful to you for strength and grace and power. Thankful to you for life and love today. And God, we just want to begin the day by saying thank you. And Lord, we come now. Oh God, to join with my brothers and sisters from all over the world. And Lord, we're thankful for this fellowship and we're thankful for this connection and we're thankful, my God, even for the petitions that you are granting right now. Right now as we pray, oh Shataye, you're ministering to needs and problems and you're helping people in the midst of their struggles. Right now as we pray, you're coming to visit somebody. We feel your anointing, oh God, moving now across the telephone lines, across Facebook, across Instagram, Lord, across YouTube, everywhere, God, that we are, we feel your presence moving upon somebody, somebody
somebody's being touched and somebody's being lifted and somebody's being encouraged. God, because you are with us right now. And I'm asking you to grant the petitions of the saints and the people that are on this airway right now, on this prayer line right now. God, I want you to bless their families, their spouses, their children, their grandchildren, their nieces, their nephews, their loved ones that stand in need of a miracle. Somebody is in trouble and somebody knows somebody that's in trouble. We're burdened by what we see. We're burdened by what we hear. But God, I'm asking you to stretch out your hand, Lord, to every place that there is a need, every place there is a problem. Oh God, every place there's an addiction or a bondage of some type. God, we're praying for release today and we're praying for your deliverance. Lord, stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand now, oh God, and touch that person that stands in need. God, touch that person that's in trouble, that person that's outside of the ark of safety. My God, deliver them and set them free today in the name of Jesus. We're praying for everybody that's on the prayer list, everybody, God, that's been submitted, everybody that has a problem or a trouble today. We're praying for their deliverance now. We want you to bless Tira and Jay and Rochelle. Lord, remember Yvette, oh God, Anthony, Kelly, Bailey today, God. Remember Lakita, my God. Remember Nakima, oh God, and her family. Lord, remember the Wilson family, the Litters, the Shockness families, God. Touch them, oh God, save to the utmost, God, and deliver. Remember Jeff Dalton, remember the Dillard family, the Roberts family, Stephen, Dennis, Nene, and Steve. Remember the Empire Christian Center. Lord, look upon Pastor Trey and Christina Staten today. God, remember the Peace family. Remember all the bishops, pastors, and churches of Region 5. God, remember Emmanuel Temple in Claremont, Florida. Remember, my God, Christians who even now across the world are being persecuted. God, stand with them. Lord, remember, oh God, Pastor Sylvester and Lady Simone Williams. Lord, look on the McKenzie family, Cynthia Clark, Bobby and Brenda Parker, Elijah and Sean. Look upon, oh God, those who are in the military now, even that might be, oh God, getting ready to be deployed. But God, we pray your hand of protection to be upon them. We pray for the Bazden family, the Moon family, the Thompson family, the Rowe family, the Holden family. God, look on Lisa Woody, oh God, and her family today. Look on Linwood Parker, Pastor Raymond Diggs, Jade S Simone Jackson, Jasmine Simone. God, remember, oh God, Aquanetta Williams today. Remember Barbara Brown, Robert Brown, Linda Moon, God, Linda McGee. God, look on Corey Washington, Seanette, Charles, Devin, Siobhan, Sarah, Skylar, Stephen, Joe, Patricia, Pauline, Carolyn, Todd, Keith, Robert, Kenneth, and Herbie. God, look on them, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Elder and Lady Harmon today. Remember the Bridges family, the Worthies. Remember the Gaines family. Remember Charles Stimson today, Abel Stimson today. God, remember Priscilla, Shana, Tanika, Beverly, Daquan. God, remember all of the bishops and ministers of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, ministers everywhere. Remember Elder Martin today. God, look on the Frederick family. Look on Deacon and Sister Graves, the Moore family, the Powell family, the Morris family. God, we pray for the homeless today. God, that you would cover, protect them, and Lord, help them to find a place to stay in the name of Jesus. We pray for LP and the Jenkins family, for Daryl Spigna, for D'Angelo Shivers. We lift up the Whitley family, the Williams family, the Austin family, Justin Edwards, every name on the prayer list today, God. We're praying for their help and their deliverance today. We're praying for the saving of souls. We're praying for the reclamation of backsliders today. We're praying for everybody, my God, that has a need today, that needs you to step in. Lord, do it today. God, we lift up the sick today everywhere. We're praying for those, my God, who are suffering. God, remember Willie Gillison today. Remember Janice Grizzly, Cynthia Lewis, Selena Smith. Remember Elder Michael Crenshaw this morning. Remember Sister Joy Leaf today. Remember Deacon James Grant. Remember Melvin Peters. Remember Alex and Julian today. Remember Malachi. Miss you, God. Remember Bridget Martin. In the name of Jesus, look upon these people, oh God, as they recover. Remember Bishop Wilder today. Remember Bishop Willie Wilder. Remember Bishop Joseph today. Remember Bishop Harrell. God, remember Apostle Kramer, Apostle Keith. Lord, stretch out your healing hand upon, oh God, these people of God. 
God. God, we're praying today for Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We lift up Mother Evangeline Jenkins. We pray, oh, hallelujah, for Mother Shirley Clark, for Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, that you would stretch out your healing hand in the name of Jesus. Remember Brother Wiggins. Remember Brother and Mother Sherrod. Remember Deacon and Mother Garland today. Lord, touch now. Remember Pastor Jackson, Pastor Carr. Remember Elder Tyson and Elder Smith, God. Lord, let your healing virtue flow, oh God, upon these people. Remember my God. Hallelujah. Remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. God, heal and raise and sustain. My God, remember my God. Hallelujah. Mother Home and Mother Tanaj. Remember Missionary Simmons today. Lord, strengthen and heal now. Everybody that's battling a sickness, God, we pray your healing virtue to be upon them. Remember Cynthia. Remember, oh God, remember Catherine. Remember Duchess today. Oh God, with your healing touch. Lord, do it today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we know that you're a healer and we know that you are able to heal. So God, remember right now, Marlette. Remember Maurice today. God, remember, hallelujah, Tony. Remember today, my God, Chris. Lord, everybody waiting on a miracle. Everybody waiting on a transplant. Everybody waiting on a touch, God. Lord, stretch out your mighty hand. Lord, do it because we know you're able. And God, not only these names, but God, go to every hospital. Go to every ICU ward, every COVID ward, every cancer ward, every dialysis unit. My God, and stretch out your healing hand. Lord, even go into hospice. Oh God, and turn around somebody's condition because you are the bomb in Gilead. My God, I'm praying today for the healing touch, even to go into someone's home, somebody that's recovering today. Remember Mother Jill. Remember Mother Pride. Remember Dr. Hayward today. Oh my God, with your healing touch, let them feel, oh God, the virtue today. Lord, relieve pain. Lord, give strength. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is being healed right now. Oh, Somebody's being healed right now. And we thank you for your touch today. God, we're praying for grieving people everywhere. People all over the globe who have lost loved ones. Oh God, in every country, every city, every place, God. And they're grieving now. We're praying for your strength and your grace to be upon them. God, remember the Oliver family, the Guiding Light Church family. Remember Sister Dolores Pollard. Remember Dolores Lincoln. Remember Juanita Dorsey today. Remember Charles and Rebecca Bass. God, remember Darlene Riley. Remember the Wright family, the Giles family, the Penn family today. Remember the Powell family. Remember the fight family, the Roe family, the Clark family, God, remember these families in a special way, the Middletons, my God, remember them, God, give grace and strength in the midst, oh God, of this grieving process that can be so heavy, but we pray for a lifting, God, from depression, a lifting from despair, and a true confidence that you are with us even now, God, I pray for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, I pray, my God, for the Carters, for the Giles family, I pray, oh God, hallelujah, for the Dockeries, I pray for the White family today, Lord, that you would comfort them. I pray, my God, for Anita and the McLean Melvin family. I pray, my God, for Margie. Oh, God, Anita Ratter and the Brian Hopkins family. I pray for Margie and the McLean Melvin family. I pray for Brenda today and the McNeely Allen family. God, everybody that's grieving a loss, we're praying for them. The Austins, the Harbisons. Oh, God, the Davises today. God, comfort and strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for your grace today to be upon every everybody that's grieving. I pray today for the Allen Williams family and I lift up Trill and Ryan. I pray today for the Clark family and I lift up Tommy and Michelle. I pray today my God, hallelujah for oh God, the Porters and the Garys. I pray for Monique, Monique and Sean today. God comfort and strengthen God. I pray my God for every family everywhere. The Halls God, everybody that's dealing with a loss. The Hills God, touch them. Strengthen them now in the name of Jesus. Remember my God, the man the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeze, the Washington Fields family, the Taylors, my God, give grace and strength in the grieving process. Remember, my God, hallelujah, the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums. Remember the Gleans, the Phillips, the Arthurs, everybody, everywhere that's grieving, every widow, every widower, every, my God, grieving parent, every grieving child, my God, give help and give strength today. God, I pray for the body of Christ everywhere, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, as pastor and teacher, I pray my God 
Hallelujah. For every bishop and elder, I pray for every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon today. God, I pray for every young person in the church, every musician, singer, and psalmist. Lord, for the total body of Christ today, that you would strengthen the church. God, that you would help us to love as you love. God, that you would give us the grace to forgive. God, that you would restore where there's been broken fellowship. God, that you would strengthen where there's been hurt and pain. God, that you would heal emotionally and heal spiritually, God. Anybody that's been betrayed or damaged, God, that you would help them in the name of Jesus. I pray, my God, that you would give us maturity, oh God, to live into love as you would have us live in love and to recognize that we are being used by you to help people. We have been anointed by you to care for people. So God, give us the grace to do it daily. God, I pray for first responders, essential workers. I pray for five Firemen. I pray for EMTs and I pray a special covering upon policemen, Lord, as they're being attacked across the country. God, cover them, protect them as every day they risk their lives, oh God, to serve the public. I pray for, oh God, students and teachers and all school employees and schools everywhere. I pray for everybody that works to help another person. God, that you would help them, that you would strengthen them, that you would guide them, that you would minister to them, God, in every situation. God, help, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, cover and protect. And Lord, as these Omicron numbers go up and go down, God, I'm praying for healing upon the, oh God, upon the face of the world. I'm praying, my God, for protection, oh God, for covering now, that you would keep, that you would guide, that you would sustain, that you would help us to do, oh God, what we need to do daily. God, keep us in our going in and our going out. Lord, bless us today, God, as only you can. Nurture and strengthen us, Lord on every hand. And God, as you do it, our huh, God, we give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. Keep us today, God. Oh God, in our going out and our coming in and bless us, Lord. And we'll give your name, the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, come on, everybody. Give God praise. Everybody offer God the fruit of your lips, and the sacrifice of your praise. Hallelujah. Because he is indeed worthy. He is indeed worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my God. This is my declaration for today. Lord, help me to bless people. Lord, help me to bless people. Although everybody wants to be used of God, but I need you to understand that God's going to use you to bless people. And they're not all going to be celebrities. They're not all going to be people of high rank and high stature. It may be the homeless. It may be the incarcerated. It may be those who are forgotten in nursing homes, but I, Lord, I just want to be a blessing, hallelujah, to people. I just want God to use me because you never know who needs you to be that lifeline, hallelujah. You never know on any, any given day who God is going to direct your path to so that you can support and sustain them. God is going to help you. So God is going to use you to bless people. Just be a willing vessel. Just be a willing vessel. Somebody wrote a song years ago that said, if I can help somebody as I pass along this way, then my living will not be in vain. I want my life to matter. And my life matters when I share myself with people. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Saturday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on our Facebook page, also on Instagram. It'll be available on YouTube and all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if it's blessed you, please share with somebody else. Thank God for those who joined us by conference call. Share that number with others so they can join and be a part 
of the conference call. Hallelujah. We thank God for every single person that joins us. We thank God for you. And you can also join us by our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And once again, all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also access our radio broadcast Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. That's every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Hallelujah. I want to Thank everyone that seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. We appreciate it. It helps us to do the things that we need to do, and we thank God for each of you. And if you want to be a blessing, you can send a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online at our website, RefugeTempleNC.com. Refuge Temple N is in North C is in Carolina. Carolina.com. Go to the donate page and make a gift there. You can give to the GiveLify app. If you have the GiveLify app, you can use that to be a blessing. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington. Look for the picture of the church and make your gift. Or you can use Cash App. That is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign the number one refuge and make your gift. And as I've said earlier, this is First Ladies Day, First Ladies Weekend. Tomorrow we're going to celebrate and honor Lady Davis, who is um, a constant. I thank God for her, not only because she's been my wife for 31 years, but I thank God because she is a blessed and gifted woman who has shared her gifts with the body of Christ. Doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter who it is. If you reach out to Lady Davis, she does what she can to help whenever she can. And we want to be a blessing to her on this weekend. And so many of you have been generous and shared. And if you still want to share, you have time. Just make sure in your giving, you indicate Lady Davis so we can make sure it is channeled to the right place. But thank you so much and thank you for everybody that's a part of this great work. I want to thank God and I've been doing shout outs and I want to shout out Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church here in North Carolina that's led by Pastor Freddie, hallelujah, and Evangelist Hyman. They are just two amazing people. I've had the chance to minister with them and for them and I thank God Pastor Hyman just celebrated, I believe, his 87th birthday. So we thank God for Pastor Hyman. We thank God for Evangelist Hyman, who is a soul winner that believes in reaching the lost at any cost, and we shout out them today in the name of Jesus Christ. So thank you for being with us today. Please pray for each other. Pray for pray for one another. Pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my dad. Pray for my sisters. Pray for my in-laws. Pray for our entire family, our nieces, our nephews, everybody. Pray for one another. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless and pray for every church that's connected with this fellowship and everybody that God would continue to bless and strengthen us. The grace of God be with you today. Have a fantastic day. Oh, if you are in the Newport News area, I'm going to be ministering tonight at the Living Waters Redeemed Apostolic Church of Christ. The Living Waters Redeemed Apostolic Church of Christ. I'm going to be there at 6 p.m. tonight if you want to join us in that fellowship. This is their youth conference and I'm going to be ministering there on this evening. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.